What's up everyone, back here for another video. So, you guys are really liking these walking videos. You guys really miss them. You guys like the scenery. You guys like the short and sweet topics. So I'm gonna keep it coming. But if I could ask you guys to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel, it'll help us grow. I think YouTube has our channel shadow banned because of all the swearing. So anything we could do to help the channel grow would go a really long way. So today's topic is gonna be on market cycles. So I think this is a really, really important topic because it's really not too talked about. So let me talk about the small cap market right now. So what ends up happening is we go through cycles of hot markets and cold markets. I would categorize a hot market as two, three, four, five runners on the day and a cold market as maybe like one, maybe two runners on the day, right? Now, the most important thing to make note of is what causes a hot market and what causes a slow market. So. The way it works is there are certain periods where long bias traders make all the money and there's short, certain periods where short bias traders make all the money, right? When you get stocks that have continuation moves, that's where the long bias traders make money. When you have stocks that just gap and crap, that's where the short bias traders make money. So what ends up happening is to ignite the market cycle, you need a runner. You need a really, really, really big runner to get people to say the hype is back into the market, it's time to buy, it's time to buy, it's time to buy. And these lessons, I feel like I've been repeating for years and years and years, but they are the same lessons that work even to this day. So let's talk about what's been going on in this current market cycle as I'm recording this video. So we had a stock Zapp, Z-A-P-P. -P. This stock went from a dollar to $19 in about a week, right? Multiple, multiple, multiple thousand percent runner, right? So what ends up happening is because Zap goes crazy, it gets people to start saying, what is the next Zap? What is the next runner? What is the next big play, right? And what ends up happening is it's each day passes, these runners become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So let's get started with what happened. So first, Zap happened. It goes from one to 19. And then what happens is SNGX. SNGX is day one, low float, SSR stock that goes from two dollars to fourteen dollars okay and as each day passes they should get weaker and weaker so what that means is this zap was a multi-day runner it took multiple multiple days to go from two or one to 19. SNGX because it was the next stock in the cycle faded into the end of the day on its first day right so what that means is the next one after SNGX should fade faster, okay? So first in the cycle is Zap. Goes from one to 19 in multiple days. Next in the cycle is SNGX. Goes from two to 14 and down to seven in the same day. Today, we got the next stock in the cycle, which was LGVN. LGVN went from $3 as high as nearly $8 and back down to $5. And this happened in the middle of the day. So notice as each day passes, the fades are happening faster and faster and faster and faster. Now, tomorrow, if we get a runner, my anticipation is that it's gonna fail pre-market because as each day passes, they will get weaker and weaker and weaker. So in my opinion, guys, this is an edge. This is an edge for your trading, both on the long side and on the short side. Why is this an edge, right? It's because number one is if you're a long bias trader, you know that the first runner that ignites the market like Zap is gonna be the strongest. You wanna use the most size on that stock. You know that the second runner, SNGX, probably gonna be a little bit weaker. So you wanna use less size when you're longing that stock and be sure to be out before the end of the day. The third stock, you wanna use even less size and you wanna be sure to be out before the middle of the day. And tomorrow, you wanna to make sure to be out before pre-market. As a short bias trader, it's the exact inverse. You wanna ignore the first stock of the day, this, which is Zap. You want to trade SNGX into the end of the day. You want to trade LGVN into the middle of the day. You want to trade short pre-market tomorrow. So this is something that not a lot of people understand. Now, why does this happen? Why does it get weaker and weaker and weaker? Because what happens is as each day passes, the people that miss Zap 
are like, dude, SNGX is moving. I have to buy SNGX. Then the people that miss SNGX are like, LGVN is moving. I have to buy LGVN. And then the people after that are like, I missed LGVN. I miss SNGBX. I miss Zap. I'm going to go all in, all in, all in on this next one. And it turns out that that next one ends up crashing in pre-market, right? And you're like, what the hell is going on, right? It's because you're late to the party. You're late to the party. So I think this is a really big edge that not a lot of people talk about on the long and the short side is the first day of the runner is always going to be the strongest. The second day is going to be weaker than the first day. The third runner is going to be weaker than the second one, which is already weaker than the first one. And the fourth one is going to be weaker than the third one, weaker than the second one, weaker than the first one, right? So I came in today with the mentality of, let me see if these stocks are going to fail today or if tomorrow is going to be the day that they end up crashing. Turns out that today was the day that nearly everything went straight down and a lot of people made a lot of money, right? So this is something that's really, really important is understanding what type of market cycle we are in. Are we in a market cycle where these things are running and turning into multi-day runners? Are we in a cycle where these things are gapping and crapping? What ends up happening is one side of the equation ends up getting too greedy and the other side wins. So when shorts get greedy and these stocks gap and crap nonstop, they're like, ah, oh, this next one's gonna gap and crap. I'm gonna size up and it ends up turning to zap and everyone loses their ass. And then the long bias traders like, oh, everything is bouncing. I'm just gonna buy this LGVN and the bottom drops out and they get too greedy. So the key in trading is not to get too greedy to either side of the equation and to understand that there are cycles, right? It's the same thing with the large cap stocks. Tesla was downtrending for six months straight. It was in a bear cycle. Now it's reversed into a bullish cycle and everyone's like, I'm gonna short it now, right? Yeah, it's extended, yeah, it's up. But as a trader, when the trend is reversing, you want this thing to dip so you could buy more for the move to 300, right? So it's the same thing all around in all different types of markets, large caps, small caps, even freaking crypto, right? There's certain scenarios where Bitcoin was down all the way down to 15, 20,000. And everyone's like, oh, it's gonna go lower, it's gonna go lower, it's gonna go lower, ends up rebounding. The shorts get greedy and the longs end up winning. So I think this is a really important topic, just understanding the market cycles we're in, understanding how to capitalize on these cycles. For me, you know, we're in the summertime and this is a very, very active summer. Usually summers are really slow, but we're seeing a lot of crazy runners. What's well, been helping me, like I mentioned in the last video, is just sizing down. These stocks have a lot of range lately. They're making crazy moves, you know, two to 10, uh, two to 14, three to eight, so it doesn't really take much size to make much money on these. But coming into tomorrow, if you're a long bias trader, I would be very, very careful buying the next hot runner because chances are it's going to fail. And as a short bias trader, if that stock is failing and we are entering the end of this market cycle, it probably makes sense to get a little bit more aggressive. So depending on the action that we see into the end of the day today, will determine if I want to be aggressive or not tomorrow. If these stocks end up having a zombie move and coming back to life and rebounding on air, maybe the cycle is going to continue. But if they continue to fade and fade and fade, I can almost guarantee that there's going to be a lot of faders tomorrow. And that's where I'm going to size up. And that's where the opportunities are to make 50, 70 to hundred thousand dollars in a day. It's just proper timing. So hopefully you guys got some value from this lesson. Um, keeping it short and sweet. Um, and yeah, so please guys leave a like on the video, leave a comment on the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if this is the type of content that you want to see. Do you want more of these ideas on small caps? Do you want me to talk more about large caps? Do you want me just to talk about trading psychology? What do you want me to talk about? I want to reignite this channel with the content that you want to see. And at the end of the video, I usually include uh, an end screen of live trading videos. So. If you've missed some of our past live trading videos, just stick around to the end of this video and there's going to be a pop-up that says live trading and you'll be able to watch some of my previous live trading videos. So let me know what you want to see from me and I'll see you back on the next video, which will probably be filmed in Florida because I'm out of here. So thanks everyone. See you next time.